I feel like everyone accuses us of being too... What's the word? It's not really optimistic. That we, we, we paint the UK as too perfect of a utopia type place just because apparently we don't say anything awful. It's not that we're necessarily trying to be that way. It's just more along the lines of there's good and bad everywhere. There's things that you like and things that you don't like. You can spend your entire life focusing on the things that you don't like, or you can put together a Venn diagram or a pros and cons list and think about, despite the things that maybe you feel are inadequate or not sufficient, there are enough things that are good or things that are making you happy that you're willing to make a decision towards that chain, even if it's not necessarily the thing that everyone else is doing. I like to call that being realistic, not necessarily optimistic, but just realistic, because if everything in life was sunny, shiny, and perfect, you're probably dead, you're probably in heaven, or some sort of concept equivalent to that, because that's not how Earth works, and that's not how life is. So what we're going to look at here today is how the UK is no good for IMGs, because apparently that's what we've not been telling you. Hey guys, Ibriz here. Do you, do you want to know something awful? There are people in this world who are so unhappy. And when I talk about unhappy, I'm just like, you know, they just, they can't imagine somebody else succeeding. They can't imagine somebody else doing better than them. So they will take every ounce of their strength and, and energy, basically, to tear them down. It could be from talking them down. It could be the, from making fun of them. It could be from just generally bothering them all the time. Even if these people have found success, even if this individual is doing the exact same thing that you are planning to do, they will not want you to succeed. They will not want you to follow in their footsteps or they don't want you to just generally do what they're doing. Now, you ask yourself, why would somebody expend so much energy to tirelessly discourage others? And I suppose the answer to that question is, I don't know. Or they're really bored. They have nothing better to do and they think, do you know what? I feel like the best way to spend my life and my time is being so caught up in what everyone else is doing. I need to get super involved in their life. I mean, that's probably one of the reasons. I've got a couple of other reasons that I kind of want to talk out with y'all today. But really, the crux of all of this is, I know you've heard these voices, these people who will discourage you, who will say anything, who will write anything. In today's day and age of social media, it's really, really easy to be anonymous, to be someone else, to just be sat there with a keyboard or your phone right in front of you and type whatever you want and you hope it hits the right person. And that person who could be thinking to, you know, to take the same exam you're, you're about to take next week will might just step back and say, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. Some random person on the internet that I have no idea who they actually are, they're telling me it's not a good idea. Or someone who's established themselves really well and for some reason isn't returning back to their home country and is actually prospering and is really happy in the decisions that they've made are telling me it's a terrible idea. So why would they do that? So I'm gonna tell you guys a little story. When I first started in the NHS, I started out in a hospital, a little tiny DGH in, um, in Yorkshire and Humber. And I started working in the emergency department. And the good thing about the emergency department is you learn a lot, like a lot, a lot. And on top of that, you come into contact with people from all over the world because the emergency department is one form of medicine, I think, throughout the NHS that people can really relate to. It doesn't matter what your experience is back home. You have an idea of how to see these patients. So in my you know, roster, I would work with one doctor almost frequently. They were a locum registrar. And what that means is they only picked up shifts as and when they needed to. And because ED is a high pressure, they always need a doctor type of environment. They were able to get a lot of escalated kind of rates, which means maybe the standard pay would have been, you know, whatever, but they were able to ask for more and negotiate for more because there was a demand. This is pretty much the case for locums anyway. You guys can check out our video on locums if you're wondering how it really works. But just to give you an idea, this is how this person worked. They didn't have to come into work as we do. There wasn't a set contract. They just had an agreement or understanding through a locum bank that if shifts came available and if they were interested in taking these shifts, they would take them. So this doctor, they would work, I would say about four days a week maybe sometimes more if they really felt like it. And they always took really flexible shifts. That's the thing about ED as well. Depending on your hours, you know, they're not always nine to five or just, you know, 
5 to 9 p.m. type shifts or overnight shifts. You could get those in-between shifts like 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and so on and so forth. So they took shifts like that mostly, you know, the ones that were later in the day to early in the evening. And they always had these escalated rates. I knew this because they told me. The nice thing about ED is you get to know everyone really well. So they would tell me and regale me with these stories about, oh, flexible life, you know, all the ways that they were making money and they had another kind of doctor job outside, they were doing something privately. And weirdly, they would always end all of these statements and stories with, but you're wasting your time in the NHS, Breeze. You know, you left the US, I don't know why you would do that. There's nothing good working in the UK. This is a good couple of years ago, you know, obviously before um, anything that people are talking about now kind of came into the picture before really we even had the shortage that we have now that, that the government's talking about. So for me, I always thought that was really funny. First, because this person had never worked in the United States. Um, they had no idea about the system there. And they just finished telling me about how much time they had for their wife, for their children, for basically having a life outside of work. And they were raking it in. I mean, they were making the good bucks without having to spend all that time that we often you know, associate with making that kind of money. I never said much to them. I just thought, you know what? Yeah, whatever. Do what you got to do. But really, one day it got to a point where I was just sick and tired of hearing this because really I, I wondered on some level, is it insecurity? Do they feel they should have come to this country earlier? They did tell me that they came and made the decision later in life, which honestly doesn't make a difference in the UK, but perhaps they felt insecure about it. And that's why they had to keep telling me. Was it that they were jealous of me for coming at this stage in my life and they could have come at this stage and they wanted to dissuade me for that reason? I knew it wasn't that they feared I would do what they were doing because they were well established and they'd been doing this for quite a few years and they were kind of like, everyone knew that they would come and pick up a shift if it needed to be done. I just couldn't figure out why they would say this. So I thought, do you know what? It's whatever. Until that one day when they just kept going on and on about all the mistakes I'd made and how, you know, I was just, they were just trying to look out for me. <laughs> I looked at them straight dead in the eye and I said, you made some really valid points. So why did you never leave? I don't think they expected me to say that. I, I think they just expected me to take everything they were saying and just absorb it. Maybe, I don't know, my moral fiber <laughs> would diminish or I would just stop talking. I'm not really sure what they were trying to do. I still, when I think back on it, I'm very confused by their motives. But it wasn't until I actually said that to them that they stopped <laughs> saying anything to me. I mean, they were still cordial and all that stuff, but they never brought it up again. And the reason for this drawn out story is for you guys to understand that there are going to be people like that when you come to the UK. There are going to be people like that on your whole path and journey to the NHS. You will constantly hear someone telling you, do you know it's no good? Go back to your home country or go to another country. But do you know what they're not doing? They're not leaving. They are more than happy where they are. For some bizarre reason, though, they want to just make it seem like they're not. And I cannot for the life of me grasp this idea. I mean, I've talked to other people as well and sometimes they'll come back and be like, oh, it's too late for me to go back now. Why is it too late for you to go back? You've done everything. You've got, you know, equivocal exams that you know will be accepted back in your home country. If you're saying you're gonna make more money in another country or in your home country, why are you staying in the UK? The people I know who want to move, you know what they do? They move. If they actually think things are better in other places. They don't say anything to anyone. They quietly go about their business, pick up their stuff, and they move. So the ones who are talking the loudest, who are dissuading you the loudest, I take what they say with a grain of salt. Mostly because it's, it's like Shakespeare. If somebody's protesting too much, you've got to wonder, why are they being that way? Do they actually mean what they're saying? Or are they trying to really get you convinced in their words by saying it over and over again? Okay, now for the elephant in the room. I know somebody's probably already getting ready to say something or y'all are thinking it because we're all thinking it. But Breeze, the doctors are on strike in the UK and not just the doctors who aren't consultants, consultants are also on strike. Why would you tell us to come to a country where the doctors are on strike? I mean, it doesn't even sound like the doctors here are happy being doctors. I mean, it's not an illogical assumption or conclusion to come to, but let's look at it from another angle. It's not that one day a bunch of us doctors woke up and decided, guys, let's just not go to work for a couple of days a month and just ask the government for more money. We have a union. The doctor's union put out a vote. They sent ballots to everyone who's registered with them and they asked, do you want to strike? 
The reason they want to have a strike is because they want full pay restoration, which means that the salary we're getting should keep up with inflation. The UK is not the only country that's facing recession. A recession is something that's happening throughout the world, and inflation, unfortunately, is a reality as well throughout the world. I think maybe you've even realized that in your own country, what used to cost one amount is now costing a little bit more than that, or maybe double, maybe triple. And that's just the way it is. So what we're looking at is, okay, interest rates have gone up, inflation's gone up, what have you, things are more expensive. But what we used to buy for whatever amount, that cost isn't keeping up. So we're having to stretch our money a little bit further than we used to because things are more expensive and our salaries haven't kept up. This is something that happens across the world. If you sit down and look at your own salary, you might question, has my salary actually kept up with inflation? This can be in your country, this can be in any other country around the world. People do question this. So that's what full pay restoration is about. That's what we are asking for right now. That's what the consultants are asking for. Currently, the only doctors who haven't gone on strike as of this video, and from what I've understood, they, are, they may ballot as well, are the associate specialists or SAS doctors. All the other doctors, however, from foundation through registrar and consultant are asking for full pay restoration. Now, does this mean the country is devolving into chaos? No. You guys can see online, you can see the videos of what the strikes are like. It's awesome people standing up holding some placards in front of hospitals. That's what's happening. It's people getting the voice out, the democratic right for them because of a vote that the government has accepted as yes, okay, enough of you guys have voted in the right amount of numbers and said yes, you want to strike, so we will listen to you. And there will be a repeat of this ballot whenever the mandate expires. Now, why is this important for you as an international doctor? I think a lot of IMGs are scared. They think we can't strike because if we strike, the government's going to find out. If the government finds out that we're striking, they're going to deport us. They're going to revoke our visas. They won't let us have indefinite leave to remain or basically any sort of residency status or become British citizens. And that's not the case. It's not just me telling you that. You can see what you know the BMA, the British Medical Association, states on their website. Um, we went on strike. We we got indefinite leave to remain. We had those unpaid days as well. Wasn't a big deal. Now, if you don't want to strike, that's also your right. You don't have to. No one is going to be able. You know, no one's going to be pressuring you one way or the other. But you need to understand why things are happening the way they're happening. And if you feel like actually that's not what I'm all about, that's cool. You don't have to strike. If, however, you understand, all right, this is what's happening and this is why it's happening and you want to strike, you can. Just because you go on strike doesn't mean you have to pick it. You can sit at home, you can chill, you can do whatever you want. It's just the importance of having that solidarity that we are all saying we want this pay restoration. I think a lot of times international doctors or just people from different parts of the world are scared of the word strike, are scared of doing anything they feel may anger the government or whoever's in charge because of bad experiences in their own countries. And I'm not trying to come across as offensive or elitist. It's just a harsh reality that I saw even when I was doing my internship in Bangladesh where there would be people who would be family members of patients who would beat up the doctors. And then the doctors would go on strike the next day and part of that strike would involve people breaking things, people shattering windows, people burning things. And that's not what's happening here. This isn't what we're going after. This isn't what we're doing. This is us using our right to say we feel something is unfair, something that we voted on, and we're waiting to hear the response. And that's all it's about, that it's about, guys. And I know you might stress out and be like, but if things are being the way that they are, how do I know this is the right time for me? Look, if you ever ask me, be it in a chat box, be it if we ever meet on the street or whatever, should I move to the UK? I will never tell you yes or no. I will just tell you, you need to weigh your options. And that's all it comes down to for anything you can do. We have this YouTube channel filled with our experiences, talking about what we see, showing what we do, showing our pay slips, showing our day to day, showing our work, our life. You can take that information and do with it what you see fit. There's so much information for other countries in your own country as well. So if you think I've seen everything, I've weighed my options and I feel like the UK is the place for me, then set your mind to that, close it to whatever everyone else is saying if they're trying to dissuade you, if, that, if what they're saying doesn't make sense or doesn't seem to correlate with what you want to do or what you believe in, and you're golden. It doesn't need to be that you're spending all of your time stressing over things that don't need to be 
thought about. I mean, I don't know how many times I see people message us and say, all right, look, I just got a job. Help me out with an interview. Or can you tell me how to do this? Or I'm building up my portfolio. And then I see that same person in different groups telling people, oh, I've been spending so much time and I'm not getting a job. I mean, they're blatantly, blatantly lying. And I think to myself, should I say something? Should I call them out? Should I show, you know, share the screenshots of what they're saying to us and what they're saying publicly? And then I realized, you know what? It's just not worth it. It's just not worth the hassle. It's just not worth the fight. We get a lot of comments along the same lines. I mean, I thought about if we published every single comment we got like that, just so you guys could get a snippet of it, it would probably cover the screen, I don't know, three or four times. But what's the use in getting caught up with what people think or people who want to be negative all the time. You can waste your time on that or you can concentrate on the good things, the silver linings, the things that you're actually trying to aspire towards. And that's all I'm about, honestly. If you spend your entire life being frustrated and wondering what other people are saying or doing, you're not going to get very far. And I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Medical school is not a cakewalk. <laughs> I'm not saying other professions are less but if you guys actually think about how difficult it was for you to just get to that point to say, I am a doctor, what you worked through, what you achieved, the hurdles, the obstacles, and now, now you get to a point and you're letting somebody tell you you're not good enough, or you're letting somebody actually get into your brain and say you wouldn't be capable. I mean, come on, you did it, you got this far. What's a little bit further for the dreams that you want to live for? So that's all I kind of want to say about why the UK is no good for international doctors. And if that's the conclusion that you want to come to, cool. If you think otherwise, all right. But as always, we're going to be here putting up videos, talking about stuff, and we hope you'll stick with us. So please continue to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And if you want to talk more on a one-on-one -on -one level, we do have personalized guidance sessions for you to do that. So I hope to see you guys soon and maybe in the UK. Take care.